Welcome to Echoes of the Dam. Echoes of the Dam. Echoes of the Dam. Echoes of the Dam. <laughs> Welcome to another chilling episode of Echoes of the Damned. Tonight, we venture deep into the dark heart of Bohemia, a place that has been shrouded in fear, whispers of demonic activity, and strange occurrences for centuries. A castle that wasn't built to keep invaders out, but something far more sinister in. This is the tale of Huska Castle, where legend has it, hell itself lies just beneath the surface. (laughs) To begin our journey, we must go back in time to the 13th century, when the construction of Huska Castle first began. Situated in what is now the Czech Republic, it was built between 1270 and 1280 under King Odokar II. This medieval fortress has always puzzled historians. You see, most castles of that era were strategically placed to defend against invaders, built atop hills with commanding views of the surrounding landscape. But Huska, Huska Castle was different. It stands on desolate, rocky terrain. No nearby water source, no trade routes, no significant town or village to protect. In fact, It almost seems as if the castle was built not to keep something out, but rather to keep something in. At the center of the castle's most terrifying legend lies a deep, seemingly bottomless pit. Local folklore claimed that this pit was no ordinary hole in the ground. No, it was believed to be a gateway to hell itself. Winged monsters and half-human, half-animal abominations that would terrify the local populace. Legend tells of a powerful duke from the Duba clan who sought to understand the terrifying mystery beneath Huska. He offered a condemned prisoner a full pardon if he agreed to be lowered into the pit to see what lay below. They tied the prisoner to a rope and lowered him into the bottomless pit. For a moment, there was only silence. Then, suddenly, the man began to scream uncontrollably. His shrieks echoed from the depths as if hell itself had clawed at his soul. When they pulled him up, his hair had turned pure white, his eyes wide with madness. He muttered incoherently, raving about creatures, torment, and a future too terrible to comprehend. He died soon after. The duke, in his panic, decided the only way to seal the entrance to hell was to build a fortress atop it, a structure that would cage whatever demonic forces lurked beneath. The castle's defenses were strange. Instead of pointing outward to protect against invaders, the walls and fortifications faced inward. And at the heart of Huska Castle, they built a chapel dedicated to the archangel Michael, the leader of God's army the warrior who cast Lucifer into the depths. (laughs) Its walls were adorned with ancient frescoes, but one stands out, a centaur, half woman, half beast, holding a bow aimed at a human figure. Not just any centaur. This one was left-handed, an association with the devil in medieval times. And yet, even the hollowed ground of the chapel could not keep the malevolent energy at bay. Visitors throughout the centuries have reported strange and terrifying experiences. Some speak of hearing disembodied screams echoing through the halls at night. Others describe seeing shadowy figures darting through the corners of their vision, only to vanish when they turn to look. Cold spots, unexplainable chills, and the sense of being watched are common occurrences for those brave enough to enter Huska's walls. The castle's dark history doesn't end there. In the 1600s, during the Thirty Years' War, a Swedish mercenary by the name of Aranto, who was also a notorious occultist, took refuge within Huska's walls. He reportedly conducted dark rituals and black magic, 
attempting to harness the castle's infernal power for his own gain. Local legend says that his reign of terror ended when he was killed by a bullet dipped in holy water. Yet, even in death, Oronto's malevolent presence seemed to linger. The castle remained a place of dread. Years passed, but the shadow of Huska's dark history never lifted. During World War II, the castle was occupied by the Nazi SS, drawn by its occult connections. It said they conducted strange experiments within its walls, searching for supernatural weapons, desperate for any advantage in their war of terror. Locals reported seeing strange lights flickering from the castle at night, hearing unearthly noises that seemed to rise from deep within the earth. When the war ended, the Nazis destroyed all records of what had happened within the castle. To this day, many believe that the horrors of that era have left an indelible mark on Huska Castle, intensifying the paranormal activity within. Huska Castle remains a place of deep mystery and fear. Paranormal investigators who have spent time there report hearing strange scratching sounds beneath the floorboards, sounds that seem to come from the direction of the pit. Some have even captured ghostly apparitions on camera and when investigators swears they heard a voice whispering, Leave now. Huska Castle stands to this day, its wall still guarding that ancient crack in the limestone, sealing in whatever horrors lurk beneath. Whether you believe in the legends or not, one thing is clear. Huska has never been a place of peace. It's a place where the veil between our world and something far darker is thin. So thin that sometimes things slip through. If you ever find yourself in the heart of the Czech Republic and you're feeling particularly brave, you can visit Huska Castle yourself. But be warned, the gateway to hell may still be open, waiting for its next victim. Thank you for joining me on this haunting journey through the terrifying history of Huska Castle. Until next time, my ghoulish fiends, stay safe and remember, sometimes the scariest places are closer to home than you think. <laughs>